everybody's heard the run and gun patterns and you they kind of people associate it with junk fishing i mean you hear somebody say oh i'm running and gunning just junk fishing what looks good but if you break it down running and gunning isn't really junk fishing just instead of fishing one pattern you're fishing six or seven patterns in the same day at the same time and to me that defines a run and gun pattern i mean i might run and fish one certain target and run and fish 10 other different types of targets anywhere from the bank to offshore but I'm going to kind of break down to you what I do when I'm in that situation where I can run and gun because that's that's where I feel most comfortable because you're not married to one technique where if something's not working you've got five or six other things you're doing also and if you can make them all kind of work together you can usually put together a winning day off of that just by being able to run all those different things. But I know <clears throat> the first thing is obviously tackle pre being prepared with your tackle. And I know I talked about this in the other seminar, the what if baits. I mean, if I'm say a, a typical run and gun situation would be my win at Lake Norman back in September with the FLW Invitational. These are the main three baits I was using, that's a Domeki half ounce mama jig on the right, the Domeki anchovy shad in the middle, and then I've got a buzz bait with a zoom horny toad threaded up on it. That was my three main baits I was using that week. I also mixed in a little bit of cranking, but over the course of the three day tournament, 90% of the fish were weighed in on those three baits. And what doing that does is when you think about running gun, especially I learned this technique on a little small lake near my house, Moss Lake. It's a 2,500 acre lake. I don't know if y'all fish a lot of tournaments around here on smaller lakes like that, but the what learned how I learned to run and gun during a tournament was by fishing tournaments on that small lake because if you put 40 or 50 boats on a couple hundred acre lake or 1,500 acre lake, it gets beat up quickly. So. The first thing I'm going to do in a tournament it, on a small lake like that or even if I'm running the run and gun pattern on a big lake is I'm going to hit the prime targets as fast as I can first thing in the morning. I'm going to try to beat everybody else to that. Say you start out in the morning and you run a couple of rocky points or riprap banks or something with the buzz bait and you get bit pretty quickly. Start running everything you know in that area that's similar with the same bait. So say for instance, I started out at Lake Norman, I pulled up on a dredged out dock and caught one of the under it on a buzz bait. I'm gonna run every dredged dock I know within probably a two mile area and throw that buzz bait as fast as I can until I kind of feel it's going away or I get near something else I wanna fish. And then I might pick up that jig and run a few docks or something like that. But always listen to what the fish is telling you. I mean, keep switching it up until you get a bite and then run that same type of structure when you get when you know you're around the same type of structure just keep running similar targets and try to get a feel for if that's opened up because throughout the course of the day the bites can change i mean early morning you may be catching them top water mid morning it may go to a jig bite you may be fishing the same type of structure but they may want the presentation lower in the water and then Obviously, I like to mix in an offshore bite too. At uh, Lake Norman, it's, it's uh, historically, if you're fishing offshore, you're fishing for 12 to 13 pounds. It's not winning fish, but it's good limit filling fish. And that's where the anchovy shad came into play for me at Lake Norman was I could optimize my time fishing for big fish in the morning, throwing that buzz bait and that jig and then I could play around out deep with the anchovy shad some in the mid morning to lunchtime. And then as the sun got higher, I'd go back to throwing that jig and getting under docks and fishing brush piles and stuff. <clears throat> Never panic when you're running this pattern because I've had days where I've started out in the morning and it may be 10, 30, 11 o'clock and I haven't had a bite yet. But you know, since you're running so many different patterns and using so many different techniques, eventually you're gonna run into them. Throughout the course of the day, you only have to catch five. And the cool thing about fishing a run and gun pattern is you're fishing so many places and you're not fishing for a school of fish. So just because you get bit on one piece of structure, the next one may be the one that's got one big one. So the places you're fishing being high percentage places are places there's gonna be one active fish. That's what you're looking for. 
You're not trying to make the fish bite. You're not trying to force feed them. They're there to feed. And when your bait gets in there, that's gonna be what they bite. <clears throat> so for this instance is, that's why we make a few casts. I mean, because say I'm fishing a, a rock that's a stretch of rock bank and it's 20 feet long. I know that that's where that fish is gonna be. If that fish is there feeding, I'm gonna pull up there, throw that buzz bait five or six times down that one stretch of rock. And if there's one there, I'm gonna catch him. And if there's not there, one there, I'm going on to the next place. So you don't wanna go down that bank with a buzz bait, come back up it with the jig, go back down it with a shaky head. You wanna keep moving and keep searching and look for those active feeding fish. And this technique is especially true for when fish are spawning or post spawn because there's so many big fish up that are active. And the more presentations you can make and put that lure in front of more big fish throughout the course of the day, you're more likely you're gonna get five of them to bite and put five of them in the boat and have a successful tournament. And don't panic if you hit a bunch of places and get bit, like I said. I mean, that's, that's probably the hardest thing to learn, especially if you're fishing brush piles or something like that. Is if you fish 10 or 15 and don't get a bite, like, oh man, I need, to, I need to go do something else. But you're good because you've got other stuff to do. This is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about lining up with that hummingbird on isolated structure. It takes a very small piece of structure to hold a big bass. What I've learned throughout the years is the, the bigger fish, they like to have something over their head be it a grass mat, a dock, a brush pile that's standing taller off the bottom. If you, you think about it, you always see fish in an aquarium, they're, they're tucked in something or they're underneath something. They've got some form of protection that they can get away from the other predators or feel safer, uses ambush points where they can feed more effectively. And the bigger fish tend to isolate themselves. That's what makes the run and gun pattern so good is because you're targeting those bigger fish. Rarely, unless you're on the TVA, rarely do you run into a school of five to six pounders anywhere. I don't think that happens anywhere but on the Tennessee River. So you're fishing for these single big fish that are loners, they're out by themselves. There's one on a brush pile or one on a rock pile or one under a dock. And these, the bigger fish like this, they tend to, Welcome to Bass University TV, an online video training course where you'll learn champion bass fishing techniques from pro anglers Pete Gluzek, Mike Iaconelli, and their talented special guests. From on the water to in the classroom, you'll learn sound techniques and strong fundamental bass fishing skills. Watch hours of video content on multiple topics at your own pace for a low monthly fee. Cancel at any time. Information is power in the sport of fishing. So learn from the very best. Subscribe to Bass University TV today.